Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel and I uh, wanted to do a little demonstration of what I mean when I talk about uh, SDRs and how you could see uh, certain signals appear on the SDR and you would miss that on a regular analog radio or a regular portable that doesn't have a waterfall because you would not know that above or below where you're tuned something has just showed up so this is a cool thing so for example i'm actually on 5500 zero, zero, but i noticed that here there's something so i can actually go here click and see what's here and of course it turns out to be 5616 which is an aeronautical frequency for the north atlantic ocean so you know it's that's a cool part of having an sdr So this is the cool part of, you know, an SDR. And that's why I like to have, for example, here we have about one megahertz that we see on the screen, which is nice. And I can see what's happening between five and six megahertz, roughly. You could see the start of the 49 meter band here on the top part, uh, which is cool because, you know, you could see all the signals from the stations there. Anything else that pops up, anything unusual, what also is nice is that often you can recognize signals. So one of the things that happens with signals on a waterfall is that they have some signature. So that means that if I actually zoom in, many signals will actually show me specific signatures of what they look like. And those signatures are actually telling me what is the type of signal. So you start recognizing something that is single sideband versus something that would be Morse code or some digital mode or, you know, depending on what you want to listen to. Uh, you start after a certain time recognizing all of the signals. And, you know, the ones that have straight lines with peaks, you know, that are, for the most part, either AM signals from broadcasts or some... Uh, signals it could be digital signals that are you know uh, continuous so that's the fun part of having an SDR um, and it's the fun part of being able to see things that you would miss otherwise um, you know I, I have a few people that told me well you know you get the same effect by tuning around on a radio well not really because in signals that are intermittent like single sideband signals it's easy to go through one of the signals and totally miss the moment where they were communicating. So what you end up having is you end up simply having, um, you know, nothing there and you have the impression that the band was empty. But in reality, the band wasn't empty. You had something, you just were tuning as it was actually in the time when it was quiet. With the SDR, well, those moments of being quiet or not, you can see them. And so you can actually see that a signal will be there for a certain amount of time, then disappear. So you know that something was there, actually. And it's a lot of fun to, to play around with that, for sure. So 8764 is uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, weather. So that's what I mean when I talk about um, SDRs. And you see here, there was something here. You can click here and say, okay, what was that? What is around 89, 11, 89, 12 kilohertz? And see what that signal could be about um, in general. So it's really a lot of fun for that reason. I mean, it's not an obligation to have an SDR, obviously. But I wanted to do a demonstration that actually you could, you know, see by yourself what you have and what you miss out if you, um, you know, don't see. Because that's what we, that's, that's the fun part here, is seeing also what's up there. So not only do you see your signal, but you see that there's something else in the band. You could see the activity. Uh, and in this case, with the uh, RSPDX that I have, it could be up to, you know, 10 megahertz wide. I could see 10 megahertz of spectrum. 
Um, but for that, of course, the fun part is to have a big screen. Um, when you have a small screen, like a, you know, if you have a laptop or a tablet, uh, it's kind of nice to see maybe one megahertz, but on a big screen, it's cool because it's easier to see a, a bigger chunk of the, uh, the spectrum. So for example, here, as I'm listening to CHU 3330, I can see something's happening right here below 2750. And I know that that's 2749, which is um, the, uh, of course, marine weather from Canada. But you know, if you don't know that what it is, you know that there are signals and you can tune around. I see something here, so you know, I want to see what's that. Now you can go here and see what you're tuning here. Here we go. And I believe this is W1AW Morse code um, lessons that they have every day. So I hope that this little demonstration of what I was, you know, I often talk about um, kind of shows you what are the capabilities of a software defined receiver is. And once again, remember that an SDR is simply a radio. It's a little box. The only difference that an SDR has over a standard radio is that it has no controls. So the controls are done by the computer's software. That's all. But it's a radio that's hooked to my antenna here. Uh, that's on my balcony outside my ML830. It's nothing has nothing to do with the internet. A lot of people have the impression that owning an SDR is doing something over the internet. It doesn't at all. It's simply a radio that's controlled by a um, a computer. Now there are online receivers available, absolutely. But the one you see here, what you see, what I'm tuning here, is done on my home with my antennas and uh, with a software called SDR Uno and the, the SDR I use, a SDR Play RSPDX. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.